I never, 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 ever opposed voluntary busing. And it was a program that Senator Harris participated in, and it made a difference in her life. I did support federal action to address root causes of segregation in our schools and our communities, including taking on the banks and redlining and trying to change the way in which neighborhoods were segregated. I've always been in favor of using federal authority to overcome state-initiated segregation. I fought my heart out to ensure that civil rights and voting rights, equal rights, are enforced everywhere. These rights are not, are not up to the states to decide. They are federal government's duty to decide. It's a constitutional question to protect the civil rights of every single American. And that's always been my position. Here's the thing about last night. In many ways, it exposed the Biden campaign's biggest challenges in this primary. They've got to convince voters that he represents the future of the party without getting mired in his past record. Joining me now is the deputy campaign manager and communications director for the Biden campaign, Kate Bettingfield. Kate, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. Appreciate nice to it. See you. Let me put up the collection of headlines here. They're not great. Um, as you can see, Joe Biden got demolished, says the week. Joe Biden gets slammed, Politico. Kamala Harris dismantled Joe Biden on live TV uh, from Slate. You tell me, what, what say you, what happened? Well, look, I would say that Democratic voters actually disagree with that assessment because we actually had the best hour of fundraising uh, in our campaign during the debate uh, since the Philadelphia rally. So, um, you know, I think we saw Joe Biden put forward uh, an aggressive, progressive vision for the future. He talked about uh, his climate change plan. He talked about his health care plan. He really used the opportunity last night, um, you know, not to get engaged with the other candidates, but to, to speak directly to the American voters. Um, and I think you heard him give a really uh, particularly personal passionate uh, answer about health care and uh, and why he feels motivated to ensure that every family has the kind of care that his family has. How much have you raced in this 24-hour period? Not going to share yet, but I appreciate you asking. No, we will I mean, share it. We will okay, share it. Okay, I mean, the if the you're going to use it as a we will, deflection here, we, will we share, should see it. It's not a deflection. It's just okay. a, it, it is a reflection of how people feel about Joe Biden and the energy for his campaign. And you will see those dollar figures at the end of the quarter. There's some people that watch the debate and are asking, was he adequately prepared? And there's been some blind quotes out there. You've got a campaign that has some, a lot, some people, some fundraisers that will talk on the record, all that stuff. But the seems to be painting an image that he wasn't adequately prepared or he didn't want to do a lot of debate prep. What can you say? No, that's absolutely not true. He was uh, absolutely prepared. Again, I think you saw him make uh, his case. Uh, and, the, you know, the argument that he's making uh, in this primary is actually sort of a unique one and actually a pretty transformational one at this moment in our politics. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's really arguing that we need to get back to a place where, you know, compromise and consensus are not dirty words and where, uh, you know, government actually gets things done for people. And, you know, he's somebody who's done this in the Trump era. I think that gets lost a lot uh, in the discussion of, um, you know, whether this vision of, of government is, you know, sort of of the moment. Well, you know, in December of 2016, after Trump had been elected, he successfully worked with Republicans, Republicans, excuse mm -hmm. me, to get multi-billion dollar investment in cancer research done. So, you know, I think you, what do you heard, make of I Michael Bennett's though, criticism that says, you know what? He cut this deal with Mitch McConnell on Mitch McConnell's terms. Why is that a good deal? It was not on Mitch McConnell's terms. I think if you remember the 20, that, the 20, yeah, the, 20, the, fiscal, the, the fiscal, fiscal cliff, cliff, absolutely raised taxes by 600 billion on the wealthy. Um, and remember, we were in a place where economists were saying that if we went over the cliff, we were looking at doing irrepar potentially irreparable right, damage. But it was to the American Tea economy. Party holding and, the and cliff he hostage. was, but he and who was sent in to make that deal and to get things done and and to make that work for the American people and again, get convince Republicans to raise taxes for the first time in probably a generation on the wealthy. I want to, one of the things, obviously we let this play out, um, Vice President Biden did try to explain his record. I want to play it here and get you um, to talk about it on the other side. Mm -hmm. Go. It's a mischaracterization of my position across the board. I did not praise racist. That is not true, number one. Number two, if we want to have this campaign litigated on who supports civil rights and whether I did or not, I'm happy to do that. Do you agree today that you were wrong to oppose busing in America then? No, do you agree? I did not oppose busing in America. What I opposed is busing ordered by the Department of Education. That's what I opposed. I was part of the second class to integrate Berkeley, California public schools almost two decades after Brown v. Board of Education. Because your city council made that decision. It was a so local decision. So that's where the federal government must step the, the in. That's why we have the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. Did he correctly explain his record? 
So I think what's happening here is the conflation of desegregation mm -hmm. and busing. Mm -hmm. And he has, throughout his career, has always been uh, uh, for the desegregation of schools. I mean, that is not a question. That is something that uh, is, you know, unequivocally something he's fought for. Civil rights were part of a big motivator for him to get into politics in the first place. Um, and so, you know, I think the other key thing here. But what was he fighting on busing? But I, I mean, at the time, was he fighting because people were upset that their kids were being bused to uh, schools that were of a different ethnicity. So I think the other key thing to remember here uh, is that he was tackling the, the, the fundamental issues that, get, that better get at systemic racism in this country um, than busing does. And he has always believed that the federal government plays a critical role in protecting civil rights. I mean, he is the person who fought for the 25-year extension of the Voting Rights Act. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's for, he's for the ERA. He believes we should pass the Equality well, Act. Heard, can I just say, so, when I heard him say... I was fighting the Department of Education. The only people that trashed the Department of Education in my lifetime have been on the right. It was yes. a very, it, it was, it was one of those, you're like, what? He has never, look, he has, as he said today, I think you heard him make yeah. the case uh, for himself uh, best today. And that is- Does he uh, think he was on the wrong side of this been, issue then? Is, no. He said okay. he has he has he has never been against voluntary busing, mm -hmm. uh, and you know if you look at uh, his education proposal, um, which includes a commitment to extend the Obama Biden administration commitment um, uh, to finish the job on integration in schools under the Department of Education. So I think again, if you uh, I think American the American people know Joe Biden, mm -hmm. they know his character. You know he was vice president for uh, uh, with Barack Obama for eight years, and I don't think anybody believes that when Barack Obama took a look at his record. Uh, that he decided he was going to put a segregationist uh, on the ticket. So you, um, I just think this is a heavy lift to, to, to try to suggest to the American people that, uh, that Joe Biden is a segregationist. Nothing could be further from the truth. Does the vice president think this was a fair hit? Look, it's a debate, and, and people are going to try to score points, and that's fine, and that's how debates work. So he is focused on his message, uh, on making sure that he's communicating directly with the American people. That's what you saw him do last night. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he, this is how politics goes. So apparently NPR has an interview uh, from 1975 where then Joe Biden said he, was for, he would support a constitutional amendment to end mandated busing. Look, I think what voters care most about is not the back and forth on the ins and outs of specific uh, pieces of legislation or amendments from the Senate in 1975. They care about what the person is going to do as president. I, I think you've heard him articulate. Does, does, should this stuff matter? And should voters wonder where was he in the 70s and, I, and look it's is he was he reflective of the times is in, that going to be the explanation in the 70s he was an advocate for civil rights as he has been his entire career as he was for his eight years uh, in office in the white house and as he will be when he's elected president of the united states i don't think anybody in this country has a question okay. about whether joe biden would be an advocate for civil rights uh last night in the debate stage the issue of health care for undocumented immigrants came up i want to first play Pretty much probably the most famous moment from President Obama uh, speeches in the well of Congress and the famous you lie moment. Take a listen. There are also those who claim that our reform efforts would ensure illegal immigrants. This too is false. The reforms, the reforms I'm proposing would not apply to those who are here illegally. Now, the Vice President Biden said he would now support mm -hmm. expanding Obamacare to that. When did he change his view? You've, well, you've heard him, you think you heard him, I, excuse me, I think you heard him yeah. articulate last night a very effective uh, argument for why this is uh, humane and also economically mm -hmm. sound. Um, but when did he, he, is, is this something he, he's come around to recently? Is this in the last couple of years? He has always been an advocate for uh, ensuring that everybody in our society has uh, equal access to mm -hmm. opportunity, and that includes the peace of mind that comes with health care. Uh, and the plan that he's putting forward, uh, which will allow uh, more Americans in this country to mm -hmm. have access to health care, uh, would include uh, covering undocumented immigrants. He said something else last night that was pretty, it was pretty interesting. He said, on Obamacare. He said, we must move now. I'm against any Democrat who opposes and takes down Obamacare and any Republican who wants to get rid of Obamacare. What does that mean on any Democrat who opposes or takes down Obamacare? Is this a, is this a signal to anybody proposing Medicare for all? I mean, is he saying, 
we're going to get Obamacare implemented first before it, you start trying that. It means like exactly what it sounds. He believes that Obamacare extended um, critical provisions, you know, uh, ensured that people could not be uh, kicked so off So he's against any Democrat reason. that's for Medicare he for All. He is going to fight tooth okay. and nail against any Democrat who is going to uh, who is going to try to tear down Obamacare. He thinks it's critical mm -hmm. um, uh, protection for people in this country, and that's something that he's going to advocate for uh, when he's president of the United States. Kate Benningfield, you've had uh, a long, I'm guessing, uh, week or two or days or who knows if you know what day of the week is. I'm not sure myself. So <laughs> thanks for coming in for uh, and me. being uh, being here on this. I appreciate Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.